his greatest gift, his greatest expression of his appreciation for humanity would not be a singular product, but rather it would be Apple itself. We dedicate this theater to Steve because we loved him and because he loved days like this, where he could share our latest new products and new ideas with the world. And we do so not only to pay tribute to Steve, but to inspire the next generation of creators and innovators. Steve was a genius, and one of the many ways that he showed that was in the, his uncanny ability to unlock the talent of everybody that he worked with. He thought deeply about our workplace and its surroundings, and he believed that they should inspire talented people to do their best work. So over a decade ago, he began to work on a new campus for Apple. His vision for Apple Park was to create an incredible workplace of the future where engineers and designers could all be together collaborating on the next generations of Apple product to change the world. Steve's vision and passion live on here at Apple Park and everywhere in Apple, today and always, we honor him. Thank you. We're here today to talk about some incredible products. But before we get to that, I'd like to take a moment to talk about what's happening in Florida and Texas, the southeastern United States, and across the Caribbean. Our hearts go out to all of the people whose lives have been disrupted by Hurricanes Irma and Hurricane Harvey. You're in our thoughts. We send you our strength. You are in our prayers. Apple is working closely with relief and recovery efforts through Hand in Hand and the American Red Cross. And in addition to Apple's direct contributions, we're making it really simple for the entire Apple community to donate via iTunes and the App Store. The Hand in Hand benefit for hurricane relief airs tonight on all of the major broadcast networks, and I, I encourage you to watch it. And however you choose to give, I hope that you open your heart to this important effort. Thank you. Now, let me tell you a little bit about our new home. We'll start moving in Apple Park later this year. But of course, such a large move is really more of a process. And the first big step is the opening today of the Steve Jobs Theater. It's the most state-of-the-art, purpose-built theater ever built for events just like this one. Apple Park has been built to reflect Apple's values for both technology and the environment. It connects connects extraordinarily advanced buildings with a rolling parkland to form an open and inspiring environment for our teams to create and collaborate. The park itself was converted from a sea of asphalt into a 175-acre green space with over 9,000 trees. Apple Park is designed to be seamless with nature. It's open, transparent. It brings the outside in and connects everyone to the beautiful California landscape. 
It's powered by 100% renewable energy. Thank you. And in fact, we have one of the world's largest on-site solar installations right here. And just like everything we make, Apple Park is, has been designed with extraordinary attention to detail, incredible precision, and really beautiful materials. We've got a great visitor center, which will be open later this year, where we will welcome everyone. And inside the visitor center, you'll find an incredible augmented reality experience where you can learn more about Apple Park, its design, and its innovations. You'll also find a fantastic new Apple retail store. As you know, Apple retail has always been about more than selling. It's about learning, inspiring, and connecting with people. Now, our stores are also the best place to go discover, explore, and experience our new products. So before we get to some incredible products, we'd like to give you an update on retail. And to do that, I'd like to invite Angela up. Angela? Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be here. And I love the fact that the same team that designs Apple Park also designs our largest retail stores around the world. But it's funny, because we actually don't call them stores anymore. We call them town squares, because they're gathering places for 500 million people who visit us every year. Places where everyone's welcome and where all of Apple comes together. But what really brings it all to life, as Tim said, are our incredible teams. We've always said that our people are our soul. And they're Apple's greatest differentiator because they bring personal connection to communities all over the world. They humanize technology. But along with our amazing teams, our commitment to design also sets us apart to make things simple, beautiful. And that's why we think of Apple retail as Apple's largest products. And like all of our products, we've designed new features to take the customer experience even further. In our largest cities where we can, we create a plaza, a space open to everyone. Come in and relax, meet up with friends, or just listen to a local artist on the weekends. Inside, we've designed a forum, a place for customers to come and create, collaborate, or just connect again with one another. For local entrepreneurs and app developers, we have a quieter space in the larger stores called a boardroom where they can learn more from our teams or again, share with each other. And the Genius Grove, a redesigned, more relaxed service experience now in the heart of our largest stores. And lastly, the avenues. Kind of like shop windows around a town square. They're carefully curated and they change seasonally to always feature our newest products and services. And this summer, to turn on these new features, we've launched Today at Apple, our in-store experience designed to inspire customers to go even further with their passions. We started with things that are core to Apple's DNA, things people most use their devices for, and they trust us to teach them, like photography, music, gaming, and app development. We've created new programs like photo walks, where customers can perfect their photography skills with features like portrait mode and memories. And we do all of this in a really fun social way by taking them out to the neighborhood to explore with each other. Or Swift Playgrounds, where the next generation app developers can begin to learn the basics of coding. And one of my personal favorites, Teachers Tuesdays, where our teams help local educators stay updated on the newest technologies and apps. In some of our larger stores, sessions are led by local artists, 
like this music lab called The Art of Beat Making with RZA and the Roly team in Brooklyn. These sessions in all stores are led by our creative team and a new position we call a creative pro. So the creative pro is now to liberal arts as the genius has always been to technology. And I would love to show a quick video to show you how today at Apple is coming to life. Welcome to Today at Apple. Today at Apple, we're going to be learning about coding. Today at Apple, we're going to be talking with a very talented illustrator. Today at Apple, we're learning about photography. You have tons of good ideas in your head, so it's like, oh, I like that. I'm going to explore that some more. When you do something for the first time, you have to be completely fearless. We've just started. <laughs> We've just started. But the feedback has been fantastic. Customers are telling us they love the role that Apple Retail is playing in their community. So what's next? Well, we're going to continue to open Apple Town Squares in the top cities around the world. We're going to invest in online. And we're also going to continue to reinvest in our 400 classic locations including Apple Fifth Avenue in New York City, where we're opening up the plaza to allow natural sunlight to come in into a greatly expanded space below. And you can see the glass cube will return when reopen late next year. <laughs> and in Paris, we're restoring an entire historic building on the iconic Champs-Elysees. We're turning a five-story atrium into our largest forum. Early next year, we're transforming a theater beneath Piazza Liberty into a modern ta day town square for Milan. Just imagine movie night there next summer. Woo. And we've recently announced an ambitious project to restore Carnegie Library in the heart of our nation's capital. We can't think of a better place for Today at Apple programs than a building originally created for the city to access knowledge and unlock their potential. And I'm thrilled to personally announce the opening of our newest flagship store in the heart of the Midwest, Apple Michigan Avenue in Chicago on October 20th. Our team has designed a spectacular pavilion that seamlessly connects the plaza to the promenade as a part of the city's plan to transform the Chicago Riverfront. So that's a brief highlight of just a couple of things we've been working on. And as Tim said, Apple's retail purpose has always been to enrich lives. So a huge thank you to the 65,000 Apple retail employees around the world whose passion, energy, and commitment in serving all of us every day and ensuring all of Apple comes together. It's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Angela. I am really excited. I'm really excited about all the incredible things going on in retail. But I am especially proud of our unbelievable retail team. It's the best place to go experience our new products. And so let's get going on telling you about what we're going to launch today, beginning with Apple Watch. <laughs> Apple Watch was designed to help people stay active, motivated, and connected so that they could live a better day. And I'm happy to tell you that more people are doing that than ever before. Since the launch of the Series 2, the Apple Watch has experienced phenomenal growth. In fact, last quarter, Apple Watch grew over 50% compared to the previous year. This is incredible. Now, 
Last year, we told you that the Apple Watch had already become the number two watch in the world. Today, I'm thrilled to tell you the Apple Watch is now the number one watch in the world. But, but what's most rewarding to us is how much our users love it. Our, we have an industry-leading customer satisfaction rate of 97%. This is blow away. Now, people write to us all the time and tell us how the Apple Watch is helping them lead a healthier life. These stories are unbelievable, and we prepared a video so that you could hear directly from them what they're telling us. I'd love to play it for you. Привет, Apple. Dear Tim. Hello, Mr. Cook. I know you may never read this, but I just wanted to put it out there. I live in Massachusetts. I'm a country boy from small town Mississippi. I'm a two-time Olympian. It was filmed by Ladino. I'm the father of a nine-year-old. I am a 99-year-old world traveler. Every day for the last two and a half years, I have worn this tiny computer on my wrist. This is the first time I've worn a watch since my bar mitzvah. I was a scrawny, sports-hating kid who never really liked being active. I was coming back from a knee surgery. While I was never fat, I was the proud owner of a dad bod. I fell into a deep depression and weighed 250 pounds. Now I get up at 5 a.m. If it's five minutes to midnight, I'll do push-ups in my bedroom. I'll take the dog out for a really quick walk around the block. I walk around the house and my family thinks I'm a little crazy. I dutifully oblige when they're crazy. I dutifully oblige when the Apple Watch reminds me to stand up every hour. The Apple Watch, I the version of myself. I ran my first Spartan race in December and ran a full marathon in February. Agora eu consigo checar em como meu corpo está respondendo a múltiplos ensaios. Today, Apple Watch, in my walk, gave me a lot of help and advice. Dear Mr. Cook, our daughter was recently diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. My car rolled over three times, and my phone landed far out of my reach. Once I collected my thoughts, I remembered my Apple Watch had the SOS feature. After being rushed to the emergency room, I was diagnosed with a condition that was causing my liver, kidneys, and heart to start shutting down. The integration of her glucose monitor with the Apple Watch lets us make sure her blood sugars don't go to dangerously low levels. For six minutes, I hung there in my car, talking to a dispatcher until help arrived. Had I not been wearing my Apple Watch, I never would have sought medical attention, which in turn saved my life. Sincerely, Paul. Thank you so much for creating something that does not make me feel old. Thanks for listening. Avi, sincerely, Stuart. All the best, Tara. Sincerely, Avi. Jill. Casey. With благодарность, you, Dmitri. Muito obrigado, Giovanni. Those stories are so moving, and there's really no words to describe what it feels like to receive these notes. I'd like to thank everybody in the video for sharing their personal experience with all of us. Now, we have some great news about the future of Apple Watch, and to share it with you, I'd like to invite Jeff up. Jeff? Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Those stories are really great. And it's, it's really inspiring to us that so many people are getting healthier with Apple Watch. And with WatchOS 4, they're going to be able to do even more. We're adding smart activity coaching, which is going to help more people close more rings more often. A completely redesigned workout app with high intensity interval training, new features for swimmers like auto sets and gym kit, an industry first. It's really simple. You just tap your watch on the machine, get going, and all your metrics are in sync. 
One, one of the things that enables these fitness features is the Apple heart rate sensor. And it's been at the core of Apple Watch since the very beginning. And today, it's the most used heart rate monitor in the world. And we want to use it to help even more people. So we're doing three things. First, we're making enhancements to the heart rate app to give you more information. Now, you'll see your heart rate right on the watch face so you can keep an eye on it with just a raise of the wrist. And when you launch the heart rate app, you'll see new measurements like resting heart rate. Apple Watch calculates this daily by correlating background heart rate readings with accelerometer data. And recovery heart rate, which tells you how quickly your heart rate drops after workout. A lower resting heart rate and a quicker recovery rate can be signs of improved fitness. And now you can keep a better picture of your heart rate. You'll have a better picture throughout the day. The second thing we're doing is inspired by many of the letters we receive from customers who notice an unusually high heart rate when they wouldn't expect one. So Apple Watch has been helpful for them, but we realize most people won't notice. So we're adding a feature. And now Apple Watch will notify you when it detects an elevated heart rate you, and you don't appear to be active. <laughs> and the third thing we're doing is focused on heart rhythm. A regular heart rhythm has a familiar pattern, but when your heart beats irregularly, it's called an arrhythmia. It doesn't mean it's beating too fast or too slow, it just means it's beating out of its normal rhythm. And that can cause problems. The most common form of serious arrhythmia is called atrial fibrillation, or AFib, and it affects tens of millions of people and is a leading cause of stroke. But the challenge is many people with AFib don't feel symptoms, so it often goes undiagnosed. We've been looking at this for a couple of years, and we think Apple Watch can help. In our initial studies, Apple Watch has been effective at surfacing irregular rhythms. So we're expanding that work, and today, Renouncing the Apple Heart Study. It will use data from Apple Watch, and it will analyze arrhythmias, including AFib, and notify users. This study is being conducted in partnership with Stanford Medicine, and we're working closely with the FDA, and they've been great to work with. So later this year, the first phase of the Apple Heart Study will be 